I did begin a story placed about a hundred years after the downfall, but it proved both sinister and depressing. Since we are dealing with men, it is inevitable that we should be concerned with the most regrettable feature of their nature, their quick satiety with good. So that the people of Gondor, in times of peace, justice, and prosperity, would become discontented and restless, while the dynasts descended from Aragorn would become just kings and governors, like Denethor or worse. I found that even so early there was an outcrop of revolutionary plots about a center of secret satanistic religion, while Gondorian boys were playing at being orcs and going around doing damage. I could have written a thriller about the plot and its discovery and overthrow, but it would have been just that, not worth doing. Greetings friends, Yoiston here and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today I wanted to discuss the unfinished sequel to The Lord of the Rings, The New Shadow. Today's video is sponsored by The Lord of the Rings Loot Crate, so please stay tuned to the end of the video to hear more about it. Now let's jump into our discussion about The New Shadow. As we know, there are three main stories that make up J.R.R. Tolkien's Legendarium, The Silmarillion, The Hobbit, and The Lord of the Rings. However, Tolkien got about 13 pages into a sequel story for The Lord of the Rings. The New Shadow would have taken place 100 to 120 years after the fall of Sauron, depending on the version of The New Shadow being discussed. This tale would have happened during King Eldurion's time, meaning that the Great King, as the men called Aragorn Elisar, would have passed away by the time of this story, changing the current canon where King Elisar died in 120 of the Fourth Age. But even Christopher Tolkien himself had trouble parceling out the timeline in the notes of the New Shadow. Ultimately, what may be gathered of the foundations of the New Shadow are within part four of the final volume of the History of Middle-earth, entitled The Peoples of Middle-earth. There were three different versions of this story that Tolkien worked on over the many years before deciding against making the story in general, but I shall speak of the one written in The Peoples of Middle-earth. The story begins with dialogue between two new characters, Borlas of Pen Arduin, the youngest son of Baragond, who is the captain of Faramir's guard, and Ceylon, who is the friend of Borlas's son Baralach. While some other characters are mentioned, they never come into play throughout the part of the story that Tolkien wrote. Borlas and Ceylon speak of the nature of evil, talking about the orcish ways that Ceylon wasted unripened fruit during his youthful years. The two then speak about how men fell trees, and the morality of one using their resources. This leads into a philosophical discussion about judgment, and the nature of evil, and Borla speaks of the music of the Ainur and Eru Iluvatar. Evil was not originally in the theme until the discords of Melkor entered within, and men were the children of Iluvatar and derived from such a great theme. The conversation of the nature of evil continued, and then the two began to speak of the Dark Tree and Hedomor for some people were not content after the death of the great King Elisar. This Hedermor was likely a leader or martyr of the cult named the Dark Tree that was gaining popularity. Hedermor was also a black Numenorian who grew powerful among the Haradrim in the Second Age before the Last Alliance, and it could be that he was a figure, alive or dead, within the Dark Tree cults. Ceylon and Borlas then wanted to know how the other knew about the cult and Hedermor, but neither answered. Instead, Ceylon bid Borlas join him after nightfall garbed in black if he wanted to know the answers to his inquiries. Then Ceylon left Borlas in his garden. Borlas would then think of his son Baralok, and that there was news from Ithir Anduin of ships disappearing. After returning to his home, Borlas smelled the scent of old evil returning to the world. Thus ends what we have of the new shadow. There are definitely some interesting things at work here. First, the story has Borlas, the son of Baragond, who is old enough to remember the last evils of the Dark Lord Sauron, and these few pages give us some ideas about how the ages and people might have continued on into the Fourth Age, getting closer to connecting this fictional history with our own human history. However, I understand, and am even somewhat glad that the New Shadow is never finished and added to the canon. While it most likely would have been a very fascinating tale, it would have diminished some of the meaning of The Lord of the Rings. Men stood together, along with elves, dwarves, hobbits, and others, to face one of the last and greatest remaining evils since the beginning of time. That is something valiant that would have been lessened if a cult of the very people freed from the tyranny of darkness worshipped the tales and symbols of evil. Furthermore, while there would have been some fantastical elements in this tale, there likely would have been less in this story than others in Middle-earth, 
for Gondorian men would have been the central part of the work. For instance, would we have seen hobbits or elves or dwarves? Would it have felt like Middle-earth, or would it have been too close to the dark times of our real world? I think these may have been some of the thoughts that Tolkien had about this new book, and they also may be some of the reasons as to why he never finished it. I know that Arda Mard means that the world would never be completely free of Melkor's evils, but I think it is best left up to the speculations of each Middle-earth fan to decide what that exactly means. Would evil return? Would it be a different evil than Sauron and Melkor? When would some evil happen, if ever? While it would have been an interesting book, I think ideas of what happened after The Lord of the Rings is best left up to each reader individually. According to letter 338 of Tolkien's letters, the author himself believed that there were indeed no tales worth telling during the King's Peace. Rather, there would be men's boredom with peace, or the post-Third Age Wars, leading to the rise of new cults. But I want to know what you all think about this. Do you wish that Tolkien would have finished The New Shadow, or are you happy that Tolkien's canon timeline ends as it does? Let me know in the comments below. From The New Shadow, we see that some things are best left to the imagination. We also understand just how great the Days of Peace are, and that there is oftentimes no need for further conflict. Thank you all so much for watching, I really hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts about the new Shadow? Do you have any comments, questions, or corrections? Let me know in those comments below. Once again, this video is sponsored by the Lord of the Rings Loot Crate. As you all hopefully know, I don't take sponsorships without knowing and liking the sponsored product myself. In fact, before Loot Crate even contacted me, I had already ordered the exclusive Loot Crate for myself and my family. They're working hard with Warner Brothers to deliver some great Lord of the Rings merchandise in 2019, and I hope you all check it out. If you use the code Yoiston in the Apply Coupon section during checkout, it will give you 15% off your purchase. This is a mystery subscription service, but I am sure that the products inside are going to be great. And I'll have this partnership running through the end of February, so there is no rush. Please consider looking into it, my friends. Also, please check out our Facebook, Twitter, merch, and consider donating to our Patreon. Just $1 a month will unlock our monthly podcasts and Discord server. Links for those are in the description. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. I'll see you all again next week with the next installment of What's Different. This is a series where we talk about the major differences between the books and movies, and this will be part two of The Fellowship of the Ring. I hope to see you all then. As always, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my friends.